Hello, this is John, and I'll be teaching you how to use Windows Remote Desktop. Windows Remote Desktop has been integrated into all Windows versions from XP on. You can find it usually in the Accessories area by going to your Start button, All Programs, Accessories, and here in Windows 7 it's called Remote Desktop Connection. And as you can see here, I already have an IP address in here. That's the way I like to do my connections. Usually they ask you to put in the machine name, and the machine name can be found here at my computer. And then you scroll down here, computer name. If I wanted to use that, I could also use that. But I'm just going to use the IP because I know that that's the sure way that I can connect to that computer. Before we connect though, I want to go through some of the options that are available in Windows Remote Desktop. Down here in the connection settings area, you can save an RDP file for later use. It will store all the username, password, IP, every credential that you need to connect to the remote machine again. The next section I want to go over is the display. Here you can configure how much of the screen you want the remote connection to take up. Here I have it at full screen, large. You can also make it smaller and it will take up only 640. Or you can go all the way up to full, pit, full screen. Here you can adjust the color quality. You can take it down to 16, 24, 15. All the settings here will adjust the picture quality so that it will run a little bit faster. So if you notice it's running a bit slower, you might want to take down the color quality. It won't look as good, but it will act better. And now we'll move on to the local resources tab. Here's the remote audio settings, so you can hear the stuff that's happening on the other computer. You can also record stuff from the other computer. Here you can also designate what the key combinations will do. So you can use Alt-Tab and Control-Delete and all the other key combinations on the remote computer. Or you can also make a default to this computer. Usually you want to leave it on the remote machine only when using full screen. So it's like when you're sitting there. These local resources section will allow you to use the printers and the local clipboard so you can copy and paste. The program section will allow you to launch a program when you connect. The experience section here will adjust the connection quality and also you can go through these checkboxes and gain some stuff that you might want from the remote PC. Usually you just leave these settings alone on the 256 through 2 megabytes because that's a good range to go for broadband speeds but also has many other connection speeds available. Usually I just leave it here because it works just fine for me. In the advanced tab, this will um, warn you about server authentication. Uh, basically it's going to secure the connection so that the information going back and forth is secure and not completely out in the open. It will try to encrypt everything and keep everything nice and secure. Usually I just leave it on warn me, but it doesn't really matter too much for what I'm doing because I don't really need too much security because I'm just using this for home use. Now we'll go ahead and try to connect. You're going to need either the remote name of the computer or the IP address. In my case, I'm connecting to one of my home computers on my network. So I already have it stored right here. It's 192.168.1.105. And I'm going to go ahead and click connect. Here you'll be prompted to have a password. So you need to make sure that you also have a password on the remote computer. If you don't have a password, it won't allow you to connect. Luckily I know what the password is because it's my own account. And here it's warning us that the security is not going to be 100% secure, but that's okay for me. I'm going to say yes, let's connect anyways. And now we're brought onto my home computer. As you can see I have full control, but the bad thing is on the other side if I was trying to help someone, they'd be completely logged out right now. All they would see is a login screen like we would when you first start your computer. You know, you can still do a lot of things. You can still get at all the files you need if you forgot something. You could email, you know, yourself a file. You could do a lot of things. It's not a terrible tool, but it's just not the best. At this time, I just wanted to quickly go over this top bar here. It'll display the IP address of the remote computer. This will minimize our window so you can work with your home computer. This will 
restore down so you can work with your home computer and this computer at the same time. When you have your screen like this, it's really easy to copy and paste. That way, if you forget a file, you can just transfer it on over to yourself. To return to how we were before, just go up here and right click and then go back to maximize. Windows Remote Desktop is still a good tool, but it just does not have the features that a lot of the other ones do. At this time, I'd like to conclude my demonstration on how to use Remote Desktop Connection. I hope this has been helpful for you. Please watch my other videos and subscribe to me if you can. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.